Uh, our next uh, presenter is uh, Dr. Noura Al Mansouri. She is from Ariva Company in uh, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. And she will be talking about um, optimization for the desalination systems in Saudi Arabia and specifically comparing uh, uh, PV based and uh, CSP based uh, uh, co generation uh, plants. Hello everyone, thank you all for coming. Um, and I'd like to also thank the Center for Clean Water and Clean Energy. Um, uh, and a special thanks to Professor Wanim who welcomed me in his lab. Um, my name is Noura Mansouri and uh, the title of my presentation is the optimization of a sustainable desalination system in Saudi Arabia. A comparison between PVRO and um, CSP MED. So the theme of my discussion will, will basically be a matchmaking between the desalination system and the solar power system. Uh, so I'm gonna start with a little bit of background uh, on the subject, and uh, then I'm going to introduce our case study, Saudi Arabia, and then I'm going to provide a very brief uh, technological overview on the, on the water desalination systems, and then introduce the solar options. Um, and then I'm going to uh, compare between the two systems and end with a, a conclusion and further work. So um, um, water, water scarcity, as you all know, is a global problem, unfortunately. And uh, specifically for the MENA region, which is ranked as a, a water stressed region. Um, however, on the positive side, it also uh, ranks high on solar irradiance. So there is a, a huge potential for using the solar power to actually um, generate electricity and use it also in water uh, scarcity problems. Um, so uh, already the MENA region is producing uh, 10 uh, billion cubic meter a year. That, that was in 2010. And the, uh, the freshwater demands are expected to also increase over the coming decades. Uh, Saudi Arabia specifically uh, is also a water stress country. It's ranked as a, um, a, a water poverty country. It's a desert country with harsh dry weather. Uh, this is only pictures of the desert. Saudi Arabia is not only desert. <laughs> I'm sure the, those who visited the country can, can say this. But, uh, for showcasing the, the, the harsh weather, I put the desert uh, pictures. <laughs> so there are no water bodies, obviously, and uh, there's very little um, limited rainfall. Um, the per capita renewable water is about 200 to 500 uh, cubic meter per capita per year, and that's way below the threshold for water poverty which is around 1,000. Um, currently, Saudi Arabia burns 1.5 million barrels of crude oil to produce water. And uh, on the positive uh, end, also, it, it lies in the Earth solar, uh, Earth sun belt. So it gives it a high uh, solar irradiance potential. Uh, of course, Saudi Arabia is an oil-based country. So most of, the, uh, um, most of the economy income, it comes from oil exports. And it's also uh, an oil-based economy, uh, an oil-based energy sector. So the, uh, the need for diversifying both the energy mix and the economy is, is great. This is a, a map of the uh, direct normal irradiance uh, in the kingdom. And this is an important factor in determining the use of CSP systems, which later I'm, I'm going to talk about. And uh, this map here shows the global horizontal irrad irradiance, GHI, which is an important factor for determining the use of PV systems. And as we can see, there is a very high potential. Uh, so Saudi Arabia has launched the King Abdullah Initiative for, for solar desalination. And uh, um, they, they're gonna start with a capacity of 300 cubic meter a day using um, PVRO in Al Khafji area, uh, and later on building up to 300,000 cubic meter a day in the second phase. So what I'm basically doing is, is comparing this system, this proposed system, the PVRO, to some alternative system that might serve better in that region. Um, to give an idea of the water desalination market, of course, Saudi Arabia is the largest desalination market in the world. It produces around three million cubic meter in, per day. Uh, the technology is used primarily is between RO and MSF, so reverse osmosis and multi-stage flash, uh, with uh, some MED and ED uh, plants. Uh, most of the demand comes from municipal users. 
around 75% and um, other from industrial users. The desalination water mostly comes from seawater, so very high salinity, and um, some brackish water, 20, around 20%. So what is water desalination? Uh, water desalination is basically um, filtering the particles and, and, uh, and salts and pollutants from the water to create uh, uh, potable water. The EPA advises against consuming water that has more than 500 parts per million of uh, total dissolved solids. And um, the highest uh, limit is 1,000. So between 500 and 1,000 should be the so more than 1,000 is considered harmful for human use. Um, in terms of technologies, there are two, two types of desalination technologies, the membrane separation and the thermal evaporation. Um, out of these, the established uh, technologies are the MSF, uh, vapor com uh, and multi-stage flash, vapor compression, and multi-effect distillation, all under the thermal evaporation. And under membrane, the established technologies are uh, the reverse osmosis, electrodialysis and nanofiltration. There's also forward osmosis. Um, so basically, th these are the two types of desalination uh, currently uh, in the world. Um, in terms of technologies deployed, these are the top four technologies. So we have 60% reverse osmosis, 25% um, MSF, multi-stage flash, and 8% NED, uh, multi-effect distillation, and uh, almost 4% electrodialysis, uh, including other technologies. So I'm gonna give a brief description on these four technologies, starting with reverse osmosis, which as the name suggests, is the reverse process of the naturally occurring uh, osmosis process. So basically what happens is that you have uh, multiple layers of uh, semi-permeable membranes, um, and you apply pressure inside this vessel uh, you apply pressure on the water to, for to, to force the water into these membranes um, that rejects the salt, basically, uh, to produce the desalted water. The overall process is, of course, you get the seawater and you, uh, you have it pre-treated to, to remove all the jellyfish, the algae, and the large particles. And then you, up uh, you, uh, you include some chemicals to clean it further, and then you, um, you use the... Uh, the membranes to reject the salt. Um, so yeah, this is reverse osmosis. The multi-stage flash, also as the name suggests, is made up of multiple stages or compartments where uh, each compartment has a varying temperature and pressure. So uh, every compartment has, uh, uh, so, so pressure here and the temperature is, is higher than, here, lower than here so that the, the water can pass. So the seawater, goes through the tubes at the top here, uh, where it gets warm in every chamber at, un, until it reaches the top brine temperature over here. We're in, introducing heat steam here to, to reach the top brine temperature of 112 degrees Celsius. It's then, um, it, it enters the first stage here where it immediately flashes and turns into vapor. And then it's condensed around these tubes and collected here as, as uh, distilled water. From stage to stage, you get purer water and more concentrated brine water, which, get, which gets de discharged. This diagram here shows a clearer picture of how the distilled water is being collected. So basically, it condenses around the tubes, and then it's collected here. The sea water, of course, passes here, and the brine water is discharged from here. Uh, this, uh, this technology is very much deployed in, in the GCC countries and Saudi Arabia especially, even though it's considered, as you will see later, uh, very energy intensive. Uh, this is a picture of an MSF plant in Saudi Arabia, Al Khobar II, which uses 10 units of MSF, uh, each of uh, 26,700 cubic meter a day. Uh, the third technology is MED, which is a multi-effect uh, distillation, and uh, uh, here the um, sorry, here the water, the seawater, is splashed into all the compartments or the effects, and uh, because there is steam coming here in the tube the water is immediately heated up to vapor, and it's collected as vapor, in, as distilled water. Um, and so the heat is re, basically the heat is reused in, in each chamber, and you get concentrated brine and concentrated pure water. Electrodialysis is the fourth type of uh, desalination technology that I'm gonna talk about. It basically uses the, uh, 
direct current, you have a negative pole here and a positive pole here. And because salts are made up of uh, positive and negative ions, the positive is attracted to the to the negative pole, and the and the negative and the negative is attracted to the positive pole, and and so water, fresh water is then collected. Salt is salt is disposed disposed of, and, and fresh water is collected. So in terms of energy use, uh, looking at the literature and selecting a few, um, MSF, as you could see here, uh, uses the most energy in, in the process, followed by MED, uh, VC, uh, reverse osmosis seawater, and reverse osmosis brackish water. So that's in terms of energy use of the systems. And in terms of desalination costs, uh, even though costs are, all, are, are tied with the energy use, you have the membranes which are also a little bit expensive. So um, there are different ranges of the, of the costs uh, of the systems, but we could see that MSF and uh, seawater reverse osmosis um, are higher than the other systems here. And these, are, of course, are factors that are important to counter in, uh, when deciding on uh, desalination plants. So moving on to the solar desalination options, uh, solar power has basically two options. I know Wujud earlier talk, touched a little bit upon uh, photovoltaic. So basically solar desalination options are um, either photovoltaic or solar thermal. Uh, pho photovoltaic PV produces electricity and solar thermal produces three ty kinds of energy, heat, shaft, and electricity. And so the types of energy produced gives us an idea of what type of desalination system we'd like to couple it with. So for the PV electricity, uh, RO, ED, and MVC that uses electricity are best fitted with PV. And for the solar thermal options, for the heat, for example, vapor, vapor compression, MED, and MSF, because they use heat, are better um, retrofitted with uh, CSP systems. Um, and over here also electricity and shaft. Uh, for, for RO systems uh, and, and, and vapor, vapor compression. Uh, so if we move a little bit into the technology to give an idea of how it works. So PV basically converts sunlight to electricity by uh, igniting or uh, exciting the electrons that move to also negative and positive um, and, and therefore produces electricity. Uh, concentrated solar power makes use of the thermal energy, so heat. Uh, where it heats, the, uh, you have li either linear Fresnel reflectors, which are, which are long receivers, uh, panels, uh, that tracks the sunlight, so that they move towards the sun when it moves. And the parabolic trough, which is more like a, uh, long dishes that are tilted and also track the sun. Uh, or you have the uh, central receiver, which are made up of uh, heliostats that are um, that, that makes use of the direct uh, solar, uh, direct sunlight, and they all reflect the light into a tube, a central tube that contains a type of liquid, either water-based or oil-based, and that liquid, of course, um, converts into uh, steam that runs the turbine, and, there, and then you get electricity, or you make use of the steam itself. So, for example, with the CSP system, like a linear Fresnel, you'd use the steam to uh, either uh, store it as heat or uh, use it in the desalination system in MSF and, and uh, MED, which I explained, use the steam to run the desalination system. Um, so in terms of um, difference between CSP and PV in terms of the, of the energy supply, CSP provides, uh, as you could see here, this is a 10 megawatt CSP plant with storage, so 16 hour storage of heat. Uh, this provides, uh, as you, you can see, a less intermittent energy supply, whereas PV is um, providing energy during the day only. Um, I mean, the PV systems could be retrofitted with batteries, but batteries are a more expensive storage system than storing heat. And here a question comes um, whether uh, storing heat is uh, easier to, than storing electricity, but how about storing water? Is it easier or cheaper than storing both heat and electricity? And this is an interesting area where, where I identified with Professor Ahmed Ghanim to have it as a further uh, research idea. So this gives an idea of both PV and CSP. 
Uh, now, in terms of matchmaking between both uh, the desalination system to solar desalination, uh, from the lit literature we can learn that uh, PV systems and CSP electric uh, best suit those that use electricity. So basically electrodialysis, uh, vapor compression, and reverse osmosis. Uh, and thermal systems, so CSP systems, are better fitted with MSF, MED, and, uh, and uh, TVC as well. Uh, so if we, if we zoom in a little bit on the CSP system, so the different types, parabolic, linear, and central receiver, because of their capacities or their energy supply, uh, it also gives us an idea of which turbine to use. So for example, with the, um, with the central receiver, with the central receiver, uh, I mean, sorry, with the linear Fresnel, it's, it's best to use it with the steam turbine because it produces steam. And so you could make use of that. Uh, and then you retrofit it with the, with the energy, with the desalination system that use that type of energy. So it's sort of to maximize the use of energy. So this is an example of a PVRO system. Uh, we can see the PV, I'm sorry, the text is very small. Um, the, P, the PV um, uh, is here and it's connected to um, the RO system. And this is what, we, what it would look like. Uh, this is a, an example of a CSP MED retrofitted also with the vapor compression. So here is the solar field connected to a thermal storage tank and connected to the MED plant. So if we compare to the two systems, the PVRO, which is uh, proposed by the initiative in Al-Khafji, and uh, if we propose uh, a different design, we could see some benefits. For example, the capacity, um, which is more here, and uh, the water quality, which is better here, um, and then also thermal storage, which, which is cheaper here, and um, also the, uh, the costs, which is cheaper here as well. So this basically compares the benefits that could be used uh, in certain locations in the kingdom compared to the originally, uh, original proposal, which is PVRO. Uh, so in conclusion, uh, solar energy, as you, as you would agree, is a great potential, provides a great potential for the country, and uh, especially for water desalination because of the different uh, benefits that, that, that are inherited in the system itself, so producing steam or producing uh, heat, um, so CSP MED provides benefits over PVRO that, are, that may serve better in certain locations like Al Khafji. Uh, again, you need, we need to understand more about the location itself, the, the water need, the water use, who's going to use the water, what level of purity we need, what budget is there. All of this counter into the decision. And um, as further work ideas, we, um, we could develop a modeling framework to assess the economics of these options. Uh, we could reach um, the research possibility of retrofitting existing desalination system with solar power. And this is something we discussed with Malak, who works in the same area. Um, and then finally, a comparative techno-economic analysis between heat, energy, and water storage to see what makes uh, economic sense. Thank you very much. Thank you.